Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Blessed day uh, to, to each one of you present uh, here today. Uh, we are at part uh, 79 of Killing Cancer with the Word of God. Uh, let us uh, get started with praying in tongues since we are in the school of the Holy Spirit. Uh, requesting everyone to join us in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of this life. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much that you gave your only beloved son so that he could be offered up as an atoning sacrifice so that we could receive salvation through his death on the cross. What a love that is, Father. And when you have loved us by giving up your only beloved son, thank you, Lord, for teaching us that along with him, you have also given us everything that we need. Thank you, Father, for your love for us is not based on what we are, what we do, what we achieve, how we present ourselves. But your love is an unconditional love because you are love. And you have loved us with an everlasting love. Help us, Lord, to grow in the confidence of knowing that we are loved. Lord Jesus, as we are here today to study the word, Holy Spirit, we ask you to take complete control over this session. Let me speak all that is required to be spoken here. Take complete control over my vocal cords. Let me decrease, let Jesus increase. 
I bind every spirit of distraction, spirit of unbelief. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us the authority to cast out the enemy from our lives. So I bind every distraction, every every power of the enemy that is working to, to distract the participants. I cast it out. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that your anointing is available right now for us so that we are able to understand the truth that is being preached. Thank you, Jesus, that this word is falling on good soil and that it is coming back with a bountiful harvest for your glory. We make this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, a very warm um, welcome to this session on killing cancer with the word of God. We are at part uh, 79. And uh, today uh, I chose a topic uh, which is understanding the marketing strategy of the devil. So um, yes. I would just like to, sister, just like to have a little understanding first on what is a marketing strategy. Now, Sister Fedora, what in simple words, of course, I have never been involved in marketing, but for the purpose of this class, I just looked through some definitions and I picked up a few points. Um, so what would you understand by means of a marketing strategy? Um, I think of a marketing strategy is when you want to sell your product and you market and you advertise it in a way convinces the person to buy the product okay so uh, very nicely put together so it's kind of a, a strategy uh, it's it's like a plan whereby um, you are trying to sell something that uh, you have so that it convinces the buyer or the consumer uh, and um, you know you get customers based upon the 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 level to which they are convinced that they need to buy it. So that yeah. would be like a, a high level of how a marketing strategy will work. Now, when we look at um, the manner in which a marketing uh, strategy will work, would the one who is making the strategy require to understand the need of the customer? Yes. Yeah, so yes. that means the strategy will be centered around what the needs are. Yes. Now, having understood the need of the customer, only understanding the need of the customer, will it suffice unless you have something to offer? Will that make up for a good strategy? Suppose I know what the need is, but what mm -hmm. I have is nothing which is really special is nothing which is away from, um, you know, what is already available. Will that strategy really materialize in getting good market share in terms of uh, the product that you are working with? No. No. So, that, so apart from knowing the needs, you would need certain advantages in the product that you are working with so that uh, there is a reason why people should opt for the product that you have. So... Of course, the majority of the strategies will evolve around the strength of the product, the uniqueness, um, why, why the product is unique uh, or probably uh, what is innovative about that product. And uh, like um, all of these things will make up for um, a good marketing strategy, isn't it? Yes. Now, suppose... Uh, a product is uh, the company is into a very in the, in the manufacture of a very good product okay and it, the company's performance is known and they come with uh, a product which is extremely good maybe say just we won't take brands but say um, if i speak of a mobile uh, company and I, I say one of the best uh, mobile um, 
phones that are available, even before I make a mention, you'll already have a picture of the, one of the best, isn't it? Yes. So because the performance is known, the quality is known, the security, the, the privacy, all of those features are known. So you already know that this particular company, when it comes to its quality or the deliverables, are extremely good. So when it is already known, the, the company will now eventually over a period of time, they only need to sustain the quality of the product, isn't it? And innovate. But as far as the trust of the customers is concerned, it is already available because people have already been um, having a good, good, uh, uh, like, you know, use, usable features available and it is trustworthy. Now, suppose there is another company and that company, um, the product is not yet established. The product performance is, is not so good. Now, when, when they begin to work with a marketing strategy, will it be as easy for them as it is for the one which is already known and its performance is already available in the market? No. So they'll have to start from scratch, isn't it? And they will yeah. have to build up. They will have to build up. Now, if we look at, if we look at um, the marketing strategies, and marketing strategies will always have their own base, what they want to sell. And in that, they will make it more attractive and they will present it. So sometimes they will use a brand ambassador and the brand ambassador will, um, will help get more customers because people will be more um, attracted because a certain person is choosing to advertise for that company, isn't it? Yeah. So, so in, a, in a similar manner, um, <clears throat> when, it comes to, when it comes to the truth, the truth is truth in itself. And you don't need to present it in a manner that it will look more attractive, isn't it? So yes. if, it is, if it is something which is not so good, you need to cover it up. You need to make it more presentable. You need to get the other person's attention. But if you have something which is perfect, if you have something which is the thing, then you don't need to polish it with something to present it, isn't it? Now, yes. now when we look at um, the strategies of the enemy, the strategies of Satan, now, which is the tool of Satan, the most prominent tool of Satan? Lies. Lies. A deceiving. Now, lies, deception are his tools. Now, when the very, the very word lie means it is something which is opposed to the truth. Now, a lie is something which is opposed to the truth. And if someone has to buy that lie, that means it will all, will it all depend on how it is presented? Yes. So, so if I come and I tell you, um, Fedora, I have this product and uh, there, is a, there is a claim of warranty of one year, but most of the times within six months, the product is getting, uh, having problems. Would you be inclined to buy that product which gives a warranty but there is no performance guarantee? No. You wouldn't, right? So the enemy's basis, when the, the basis of enemy's marketing strategy is lies, now he, he has no way by which someone will buy in lies if it is given plainly. If it is served as a lie, shown to be a lie, nobody will want to take it, isn't it? Yes. So if he has to market a lie, he has to make it presentable. He has to put it in a manner which makes you believe it is not a lie. It is actually truth. And that is where comes the deception. So the enemy will present he will present a lie 
in a manner that it looks like the truth so that he can deceive so in simple words if we have to see um, a, a simple definition of deception it will be uh, it is a way by which you deliberately cause someone to believe something which is actually not true and you do it for your personal gain or you take you want to take advantage so uh, so if you have to say that again it's deception is a means by which we uh, deliberately cause someone to believe something which is not true and this is done so that it is used for one's personal gain or that you take advantage of another praise god praise thank you god. jesus Thank so, you. sister, can we go to uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, 2482? Yes, sister. Just a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A lie consists in speaking a falsehood with the intention of deceiving. The Lord denounces lying as the work of the devil. You are of your father the devil there is no truth in him when he lies he speaks according to his own nature for he is a liar and the father of lies please god thank you jesus uh, the next one lying is the most direct offense against the truth to lie is to speak or act against the truth in order to lead someone into error by injuring man's relation to truth and to his neighbor a lie offends against the fundamental relation of man and of his word to the lord the gravity of a lie is measured is measured against the nature of the truth it deforms the circumstances, the intentions of the one who lies, and the harm suffered by its victims. If a lie in itself only constitutes a venial sin, it becomes mortal when it does grave injury to the virtues of justice and charity. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So if we go to um, Catechism 2482, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, so Jesus. Um, here, the word of God tells us that the Lord denounces lying as the work of the devil. And it says here, you are of your father, the devil. There is no truth in him. Now, when we look at John 8, 44, sister, we can go to uh, stream here. Yes, sister. John 8, 44. You are from your father, the devil, and you chose to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So we, we, we see here, Jesus said that he was a murderer from the beginning. Through lies, through lies, um, he convinced Eve so that she could go ahead and, and disobey God by eating the, the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, so what Jesus is saying that the devil was a murderer from the beginning. He's, he's not into this just today. Right from the beginning, right from Genesis, the very first book, we've seen that the devil's first uh, mention about lies comes in Genesis chapter 3. So he was a murderer from the beginning and he does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. He's, a, he's called to be the father of lies, a, a liar, because he speaks of his own nature. So that means Satan 
is full of lies. And what is lies? Lies is everything that contradicts the word of God. So everything that Satan speaks is all that is against or contradictory to the word of God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So if if we, in, in relation to this, if we look at 2 Corinthians 11, 3. Thank yes. you, Jesus. But I now say that as the serpent deceived me by cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Praise God. So, so if if we are not mindful, if we are not aware of the strategies of the enemy, that he is the one who who uh, deceives. And how does he, he deceives? Because he is very cunning. The, the, the description that is given here is that um, the serpent deceived Eve by his, by his cunning, uh, by its cunning. And your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Now, when the enemy has to get get people of God, his master strategy, which is lying right from the beginning, it has not changed. Then it was lying and deception, and it continues to be the same even today. Now, for example, um, if a person has just one strategy, and every time, every time, uh, the person operates. He he works with that strategy. Say, for example, sometimes you you know of certain people who may have been known for serial killing, and then at the end of it, they would leave a particular trail uh, to show the the mark of that particular uh, murder or killing, so that it could be related or associated with that particular person. Okay, so this is like a death one, death two, murder one, murder two, like that. So now you know that something like that has happened means it would be probably that particular person who would have been involved. Now the word of God tells us that his strategy uh, that is lying. Now it, this strategy has not changed. He has been consistently, continually using this strategy of lying and deception. So he is deceiving us through the lies. But what is, what is sad is that people of God are not yet aware. We are taken, we, we are led astray because there are often times we are not aware of his strategies. If we have to take a simple example, suppose my premises um, has a gate in front and the premises is fully secured from all sides with a high uh, boundary wall. And there is a problem of stray animals um, in the vicinity. So if I leave the gate open, then the stray animals will get access to my premises and then they can mess around in my property. Now, when I know that the only way by which the stray animals can get into my premises is when the gate is left open. Now, for me to have no trouble with the stray animals, will, will it be sufficient if I just make sure that I close the gate each time it is open? No. Uh, see, uh, see, when it comes to stray animals, I'm not, oh, yeah. I'm, not able, I'm not able to do anything to them. I have to coexist with them. Because now with protection of animal rights, you have to live with whatever uh, even the animals were around you. So the only problem is you don't want them to enter into your premises, but they are there in the neighborhood. So, you close so when them. I can't do anything to them and uh, I have a way by which I can shut the door and, and shut the gate and make sure they don't have access, will that suffice to keep me from ha being hassle-free? Yes. That will suffice, right? So, so in the same way, now the enemy, the devil, is already defeated. But we also know that he is there on this planet. 
he is not destroyed he is defeated because he is defeated and he is available on this planet he is out there to get whoever he can because he is waiting to um, if we look at 1 peter 5 8 praise god thank you jesus thank you jesus discipline yourselves keep a lot like a roaring lion your adversary the devil crawls around looking for someone to devour praise god so he is there and the word of god says that he is like a roaring lion he is not a roaring li- lion but he is like he pretends to be one and the 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 word tells us here that keep alert so it's only when we are alert that we can protect ourselves from the adversary the devil because he is continually looking for someone to devour now how will he devour someone can he come and catch your neck no will the devil come and hold you at in at your neck no no the way by which he gets to us is through people the way by which he attacks children of god is through relationships so when when we know when we know that the the enemy is like a roaring uh, lion he is waiting and he is looking so he is on a prowl he is continually moving the enemy is not someone who has seen you once and seen that you are holy and he is gone for a lifetime no he's he's on a prowl he's on a lookout he's looking continually whom he can devour and this this devouring job he does through our relationships this relationship can be that of parent child spouse sibling neighbors colleagues uh, your 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 school your friends it could be anyone so that is why when when we understand that the enemy is like a roaring uh, lion waiting to see whom he can devour we need to understand we need to be aware uh, Jose, we need not go there sister we understand in hosea 46 the word of god says my people are destroyed due to lack of knowledge it is when we are ignorant of the ways of the enemy that we are positioning ourselves to be destroyed by the enemy often times often times when when things go wrong and and we know that it will begin with some relationship or the other maybe a boss subordinate um student teacher within the families it will begin with some relationship and when things go wrong what do we do we begin to target the person who is coming against us we think that the person who is causing us trouble is the one who is a problem my dear brothers and sisters in christ we need to understand that we are not fighting flesh and blood on this planet earth we are here and everything that's going wrong with us in our relationships it is not that we are we are fighting against the person not the flesh and blood if we see ephesians 6 verses 10 for our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh but against the rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places praise god praise god thank you jesus but but when we have troubles our first attack will be okay this particular person he is my colleague and he has not cooperated with me during this project that means that person has got something against me so when i get the next opportunity to work with that person i may be looking for a way by which i can also not cooperate so that 
at the time that he has to give a performance report, maybe I am not willing to cooperate because the previous time he has not cooperated with me. So now what is happening? There is trouble in that relationship between colleagues. So what, what, what does the person do? The person attacks the other person. But what are we required to attack? We are required to attack the wiles of the enemy. The, the enemy has captivated this particular person, is trying to get that person to work against me. It is not him. It is not her. But it is the enemy who is captivating. And that is why the word of God says that our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh. But what is shown to us? What are we looking at? We are deceived into thinking that it is the person who is creating all the havoc. So the enemy is nicely covered up behind the person, using that person to bring about strife. So if I understand that it is not the person, but it is the, the, the ruler, the, the authorities, the cosmic powers of the present darkness, then I will not I will not do anything which is like targeting the person. I will then understand that I need to target not the person, but the enemy. The Satan is the one who I need to take authority. I will have to take authority against the enemy who is using that person. Rebuke, curse, cast it out. And when that is done and I operate in love with that person, the relationship is now scheduled to be healed. The relationship is now scheduled to be sorted out. Praise God. Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. But if if I am if I'm not aware that the 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 ways of the enemy is to use people, I will end up fighting. I will end up having wrong relations. I will end up probably cutting myself off those people. At the most, maybe when it comes to workplace, when it comes to certain friends in 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 premises, uh, college premises, you may be able to keep yourself away from a, one or two people. But what about your own families? If the enemy is using a sibling to bring about, um, you know, misunderstanding, to bring about strife, is cutting off from your own sibling the solution? No, no, you cannot do that. So you need to be able to understand and know that it is not it is not your sibling. It is the enemy who's who's using your sibling to come against you. So it is what we require is we require the knowledge. We need to understand what is the truth because he will use lies. But you and I, as children of God, are called to use the truth. We are, we are called to use the word of God to, to, to win our battle. And that is why the word of, we will not get there. The word of God says that we have to use the whole armor of God. And, and uh, sister, can we go to 2 Corinthians 4, 3 uh, and 4? Yes, sister. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the Praise image God. of God. Praise Thank you, Jesus. God. So, so... If the gospel is veiled, if, if a person is not aware about the truth and due to which the person is perishing, now why is it happening that way? It is because the God of this world, if we see here the God of this world, there is a small g which is Satan. The God of this world is Satan because he is the one who took the dominion that was given to Adam and he got that dominion and became the God of this world. And he continues to be the God of this world, except to all those who believe in Christ. 
for all of us who believe in Christ and accept Jesus as the Lord of our lives, we have him as our God. But for those to whom the gospel is veiled, they do not know the truth. He has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. Satan has blinded their mind. Why? So that to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of Christ. Because should they see, then they will come into the understanding. They will accept Jesus as Lord and be saved. So the enemy is always on a lookout to see whom he can devour. As long as he has people who are ignorant of the truth, his, his strategy is very easy because he has to serve lies. If you don't know what the truth is, then you're going to buy in the lie as the truth, isn't it? Yes. So if you know the truth, then you will not buy in. Suppose, suppose somebody comes at your doorstep, Fedora, and uh, tries to sell you an iPhone, okay? And is giving you at a very, very um, meager amount, say 10% of the cost price. You have only heard maybe a little that iPhone is the best. So you only know that iPhone is the best. But you've never seen what an iPhone looks like. You don't know what are its features. You don't know what is its logo like. Since you don't know any of it, but you only know that it is one of the best and you're getting it at probably one tenth the price. Now, would you be um, a, a good target for the person to sell you that device, which is actually not an iPhone, because you do not know that it, it is? Yes. Praise God. So that Praise means God. when you are equipped with the truth, then it is difficult for someone to bring a lie and convince you, isn't it? Yes. So, so we see here that the, the God of this world, Satan is blinding the minds of the unbelievers because he, don't, he doesn't want them to come into the understanding of the truth because he knows that should they come to the light of the gospel, then they will be saved. So the word of God tells us that because we are not fighting uh, blood and flesh, but we are fighting the wiles of the enemy, we are required to wear the whole armor of God. With, which, which speaks about the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes for our feet, the, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. So all of this is required for us to keep ourselves guarded, to keep ourselves protected. And this is given to us. It is already given to us. The written word of God is already available with us. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, so let us go to the first instance where, where Satan deceived Eve uh, in Genesis chapter 3. We have gone through this scripture several times, but for the purpose of understanding the marketing strategy of deception, let us revisit this scripture again, Genesis chapter 1. Sorry, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 onwards. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpents... Please, please, God. please God. Sister, can we go back? Yes. Sister. So, so if we have to pick a few things from here, we see that the serpent was more crafty. So the serpent is described here the uh, as very crafty. And... He said to the woman, now he is coming to begin a conversation. Did God say? So the, the first thing, if you, if you see in, in the word of God, the first thing that is mentioned about the serpent's conversation with the woman is 
did God say? So whom did he quote first? God. God. Who was very dear to the first, the, the, the first couple on earth? God. God. So they knew only God as, as men and wife that they were together. They knew God as God walked with them. So when he's trying to come to, to Adam and uh, to, to Eve here in, in this instance, when he comes to Eve, what is, how is he beginning his conversation? He's beginning a conversation with, with someone. The context is given to God. Now, does, does the enemy by any means have any reverence to God? No. He has no reverence to God. He does not love God. He hates God. And when he, he does not love God, he has nothing to do with God. Then why did he even start his conversation with God? Did God say? He didn't come and ask, ask Eve, did your husband tell you something? Did your husband tell you not to eat something? No. He comes and asks, did God say? That means when the this, this, this goes to show us that when the enemy comes to us, he will come in a manner to start a conversation with something which is very dear, which is very precious, which we value, which, which, means, which means something which is very significant to us. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. So Thank even you. though he himself never loved God, yet... He began the conversation. Now, when, when someone is coming and talking about God to begin the conversation, has the enemy gained the trust that to make her think that, okay, whoever is speaking about God is speaking about something with someone with whom I have a relationship. And he traps her to come into a conversation. Now, when we look in the next scripture, it says the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree in the garden. And then she goes to say, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you should you shall die so here when we see now in in genesis chapter uh, 2 when when god told adam eve wasn't yet created so when when god told um, adam thank you jesus thank you jesus and the lord genesis, go ahead and the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day you eat of it, you shall die. Praise God. So, Praise so now, when we, now when we go to Genesis 3, um, where uh, the, the uh, woman speaks of the consequences, what does she say? nor shall you touch. So what is she doing? She's telling you shall not eat and nor shall you touch or you shall die. So which, which also shows that she didn't have the first hand information and she added and made that, uh, that information that was given to Adam a little more, um, you know, what to say? She packed it with additional words, like you know, nor shall uh, shall you touch. Now, what happens is when we, even in our lives, when we do not have the first-hand information about what the word of God says, and the first-hand information about what the word of God says is available for us in His written word. When we don't have the first-hand information, and we pick based upon what others are saying, what I have heard others speak, what has been told to me, is there going to be room for me to make my own interpretations? 
Yes. Yeah. So just the way she said, nor shall you touch it. Here it, it revealed because for her, she was informed by Adam. And it is possible that when we get certain information, we may think that everything that is told to us is true. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us be, let us be aware that everything that we hear need not be true. Even if the intention of someone who's trying to tell you is, is not bad, is not evil, but they can make a mistake. So it is always required for us that we go to the source, that we go to the source, which is his written word, so that we may not be manipulated. Oftentimes uh, we hear, and especially when I minister to people, uh, there was this particular person who told me that uh, her child used to be sick and when she met some preacher uh, not to mention who the preacher is the preacher told that that particular lady that there was a curse upon the house and that is why the child was being sick that the child was very sickly now now what happened she received she received the message from this man and thinking and believing that that man is a man of God, the message which was given brought about fear. Now, she may have heard in the past that, you know, there, there are curses, but she wasn't aware that Christ has redeemed us already from the curse of the law, that we who are in Christ, we who believe in Jesus are now not under the dominion of the curse. We are already been redeemed. So what happened from the time she got the message from the men, the so-called man of God, she came into so much fear that not only was the child sick, but this mother was having sleepless nights. She was not able to sleep thinking that how to rescue her daughter from this curse. So she did not have a, a thorough understanding and she did not confirm it for herself up until the time she was shown this scripture that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So she, she was not aware about the truth and what was told to her, she received it. And she was in so much of fear that now not only the daughter was sick, but her health was getting deteriorated because she was not able to sleep. And only when she got the truth from the written word of God that she has already been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, because of the truth, the truth set her free. Praise God. Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. So, so sister, do we go back? Can we go back to Genesis 3? Yes, sister. Just Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So what did he do? He said, scroll for the sister. Oh, yes. Sister. Thank you, Jesus. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and and evil. Praise God. So here itself we have in Genesis chapter 3 verses 4 and 5 giving us an understanding about the truth and what a lie is. The, the woman said uh, praise God the woman said in, in Genesis 3 3 the woman said God said if you eat from the tree uh, that is in the middle of the garden uh, and she added on to it nor shall you touch it um, you shall die. And what what the serpent said was, you will not die. die. So that means we have the truth in Genesis, uh, the part one of Genesis 3.3. There is the truth. 
and down below we see water lies. It is exactly contradictory to what God said. Or better still, what we have seen in Genesis chapter 2, which was the truth, which was told to Adam. Uh, Eve would have added more to it by saying that even if you shall touch, uh, you shall die. So when we see here, we need to understand that anything that comes to us, which is contradictory to the written word of God, we should be able to discern and know that it is a lie. But my dear brothers and sisters, how will we know that it is a lie that is given to us unless we know what the truth is? So for me to know that something is a lie, I should know first what is the truth. If I don't know what is the truth, anything that is served to me will be made to be believed to be a the, the, the right thing, the truth. So knowing the truth is of utmost importance for us. And the truth is available for us in his written word. The word is the truth. Jesus said, I am the life, the way, and the truth. And Jesus is the word. So the word of God is the truth. Everything that is written in the word, in the, in, in the Bible, is the truth. And anything that we come across in our lives, which is not aligned, which is not aligned with the truth, is a lie. Praise God. Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. So here I, I just like to make a mention um, when it comes to truth and, and, and lie. Uh, say, um, Sister Fedora, do, yes. you believe, do you believe that um, every word of God uh, that is written is the truth? Yes. Do you believe that God's word shall never fail. Yes. But he is faithful to keep his promises. Yes. Now, do you believe about each and every word that is written in the Bible to the same degree? No, because some I do not know yet. Some you do not know. But is it possible that everything that you know, you believe it 200% or could there be a little up and down in certain areas? There could be an up and down in certain areas. There could be a, a, a variation in my believing, even though I may know. For example, I'll give my own exam, uh, example what happened only a few days back. Uh, I had uh, uploaded a video. Uh, it was actually an audio message converted to a video on my channel, the very first video on the uh, on the mystery of annunciation, the joyful mystery of annunciation. So when that um, converted audio was uploaded, then I realized that it would have been better if it was a video. Now, the things that struck me was it would have been good if I had the resources because it was done uh, for my own channel. So it was the very first um, video, the channel Faith, Hope, Love. And so I was thinking, um, this, this video was made live on, a, on the last Sunday of January. And um, so whilst it was live and day one, I was thinking I should equip myself further with some devices, some gadgets that will help me get uh, video recordings real time. And it would be uh, very easy to manage. So as I was contemplating on that, the very next day, even before 24 hours were over of the video going live, I get an offer of job. Now, this offer of job was to work four days a week, uh, four hours a day. And like, you know, with a designation of a project manager in a field that uh, I've been working also uh, as a, on, on voluntary basis, currently working on voluntary basis. So now it would be like an opportunity to get paid for it. Now, when that offer came, uh, the first thing that struck me was in my mind, I began to rationalize, oh, I need to get certain gadgets. I need to get some devices that will help me. So maybe this is a good offer. See, so timely it has come. Even before 24 hours are over, this offer comes. So it looks like something which has come 
and which is really uh, very good. There's nothing wrong. It's a genuine offer from a known person. And I know that there is from the person from the side of the person who is giving the offer, there's there is nothing wrong. There's no wrong intention. But as I began to to um, speak to the Holy Spirit and asking the Holy Spirit to guide me. The Holy Spirit brought me to these scriptures, Philippians 4.19 and thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 4.19, which says, And my God, God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So there is a promise of God that he will supply all my, he will satisfy all my needs. He'll supply all my needs. And um, Matthew 6.33 also uh, tells me that when I seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will be added unto me. All these things will be given to me. So as the Holy Spirit was reminding me of the scriptures, I began to understand that for a moment, my focus was changed. I was thinking that if I take up the job, then I will be able to get what I need. But God has already promised me when I'm seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, when my commitment is not to be working to make money or to earn money, but to be making myself available to reach out with the word of God and especially to comfort those who are suffering with, with critical illnesses like cancer for me having been comforted by the Lord, comforting others through the comfort that I receive. So when I have committed myself to do that and, and in that if I have certain requirement, now here I was convicted by the Holy Spirit. Will the, will the same God who's called me, given me this assignment, helped me to identify the assignment. Is he not the one who has also already provided for me? Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. So Thank you. it was, it was a, 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 through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, I understood that it was only meant to be a distraction. Because then once, once I go to believe that I need to drop my commitment, my plan, and take up something to fulfill my needs. Then, one by one, it see it, it always starts with one area. It starts with one little thing which I grow into unbelief. Okay, maybe everything of the Bible is good. I, I am fine with everything. But this one thing, I don't think it will work for me. This, when the enemy manages to to convince you that, yeah, God, God is fulfilling most of the things he has promised, but this one thing is not, maybe he's not going to give it to you. Now, if we have to uh, extrapolate this to another scripture, since we are in the class of killing cancer with the word of God, and we look at 1 Peter 2.24. Yes, yes. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Praise God. Praise God. So a person who has been served a report of cancer diagnosis. Now what is the report screaming? You will die. You will die. You will die. So now the fact report of cancer diagnosis is telling you will die. Now that is contradictory to God's promise in 1 Peter 2.24. God's promise is telling us that he bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Now, now is, the, is the report which is served by the doctor, is he giving a report which is not right? 
Is he fabricating a report when he is giving it to a patient with a cancer diagnosis that he has cancer when he does not have cancer? He has cancer when he does not have cancer, yes. Yeah, so because he has cancer, the person has cancer, and so the doctor only issues a report stating what is the diagnosis. Now, when the facts are presented with a diagnosis, it does not mean that this diagnosis is unto death. See, um, in the case of Lazarus, when, when uh, Jesus got the message from um, Lazarus' sister saying that the one whom you loved is sick, what did he say? Um, sister, I think it is John 14, is it? I, I know it is some chapter 14. Praise God. Where, where, they, where Jesus get the message. Sister, can you please look up? Uh, when Jesus yes. gets the message. Um, yes, John 11, 3. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. He whom you love is ill. Praise God. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified to it. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, are you being served a report of illness which seems to be critical? And just because the report has been given to you, are you now going, growing to believe that you're going to die out of that sickness? And if you think that way, I want you to go to John 11, 4. And just the way Jesus said it, this illness does not lead to death. I want you to have yourself repeatedly telling yourself that this illness does not lead to death. But God will be glorified. So when you know that this illness is not unto death, but God will be glorified, and God has, uh, in, in the written word, in 1 Peter 2.24, it is already written that you have been healed. Now the report which says sickness, critical, stage X, Y, Z, now, is this now going to have any power over your life? Is the report, however bad it is, is it going to have power over your life? No. No. It will not have. But for it not to have power over you, you have to first be empowered by the word of God. You have to have the word abiding in you. It's only when the word is abiding in you, there's going to be no room for anything that is coming from the kingdom of darkness. And even if it comes, you are not going to accept it. You're going to be able to outright reject it. Just as Jesus said, the sealness does not lead to death. Because the word of God says in, in Psalm 91 too, when you make the Lord your refuge and fortress, he's blessed you with long life and he's the one who shows you his salvation. Um, Psalm 91, 16. The prerequisite is making Jesus the refuge and fortress is the prerequisite. But the benefit is that of Psalm 91, 16, which says, with, with long, long life, life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Praise so God. you who is a believer, you who believe in Jesus, who has made him the Lord of your life, he is your fortress, he is your refuge. And he has promised you a, a blessing of a long life, a satisfied long life, not just long life. The word of God doesn't say with long life alone. But he says, I will satisfy them. And a satisfied long life is a blessed and healthy life. A life of abundance, not of sickness, not of illness. So, so when, when a lie is served, the, the lie that is served to you, you can either receive it or you can reject it. 
the power to reject it is based upon your knowledge your awareness your knowledge your understanding of god's promises if you do not know what is your authority if you do not know what is your inheritance the enemy is ready to take you for a ride praise god thank you praise jesus god. so thank sister can jesus. we go back to genesis yes sister praise god thank you jesus genesis 3 praise god So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise she took of its fruit and ate and she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate Praise God thank you Jesus so so sister Now when we look in Genesis 3:6 when the woman saw that the tree was good for food we need to understand that this is not something which would have happened like you know at that very moment because the enemy is a subtle enemy and we know that he is very consistent with his advances he will not come once he will not come once and if you um, deny or if you ignore be gone he will keep coming he will keep coming he will keep coming and he will make sure that he gets you and the only way to make sure that you don't fall into his trap is to be aware about the truth uh if we look at um, potiphar Uh, Potiphar's wife in in Genesis sister can we go to Genesis chapter 39 uh we can go to 39 verses 6 6 through 10 so he left all that he had in Joseph's charge and with him there he had no concern for anything but the food that he ate now joseph was handsome and good looking and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on joseph and said lie with me but he refused and said to his master's wife look with me here my master has no concern about anything in the house and he has put everything that he has in my hand he is not greater in this house than i am nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself because you are his wife how then could i do this great wickedness and sin against god and although she spoke to joseph day after day he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her praise, praise god. god thank you jesus so did potiphar's wife um have his eyes uh, have her eyes set on joseph yes yes because she advanced she made her suggestion but but did joseph put her away yes and having put her away was it, was this just a one time exercise we we see here in genesis 39:10 the word of god tells us that and although she spoke to joseph day after day so that means the enemy makes his uh, his advances when he wants to lay a when he lays a trap when there is a snare he makes his advances day after day day after day but he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her the only reason which or the only reason that have would have helped the way by which it would have helped uh, joseph to put up his stand is because if we look in genesis 39 9 it says how then could i do this great wickedness and sin against god 
Joseph understood that it was not right for him. It would be wickedness. It would be a sin against God. And because he understood that this would be a sin against God, he did not want to do anything to sin against God. Even, even if we see uh, his, his, um, what he has to say in Genesis 39, 9, he is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself. So he respects the boundaries. Everything is given to Joseph. He has access to everything except the master's wife. And he respects the master's uh, authority over his wife, that he, sh he should not be the one who is messing up with her. So my dear brothers and sisters, even in our lives, when the enemy has to bring in lies, don't think he will serve you a lie just once. He will come repeatedly. He will put so much pressure that, you know, if you are not strong, if you are not wearing the whole armor of God, if you are not using the word of God, speaking, confessing, uh, fighting every battle that you are facing with the word of God, with the sword of the spirit, that is God's word, then you can be very easily enticed by the enemy through the lies that he's serving. Praise God. Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. So, Thank so Jesus. we go back to Genesis 3. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made lawn cloths for themselves. Praise God. So Praise so God. did did the did the serpent say that, that their eyes would open when they eat the fruit? Yes. Yeah. He said. And that's actually what happened. So was he telling the truth? Partially. Partial truth. So he gave them a piece of information. And along with that, he packaged everything which was not true. He did not tell them that your eyes will open, then you will know all of that. He did not tell that. He only told, okay, your eyes will open and now you will be like God. So he distorted the message. He distorted what will happen after they have access to the fruit. But now when we see Genesis 3.7, when their eyes were opened and they, were, they found themselves naked, now is, is the enemy still there with them? Now yes. his, mission, his mission is accomplished, but is he now continuing to have a, a conversation with them? His mission is accomplished. He served them with lies. He deceived them. He prompted Eve to disobey God. In that disobedience, Eve did likewise with her husband. And when, when that was done, the enemy is no longer mentioned. Now, he is not continuing to remain on the scene. My dear brothers and sisters, oftentimes this is what happens. Maybe like if we have to take an example. Um, at first, at first uh, attempt, maybe a person is served drugs. So the, the peddler may be selling drugs and uh, the, this person tries it for the first time, gets a taste of it. So the desire for the drug is planted. Now, once the desire for that drug is planted, will the, will, will the person who's selling it need to come again and again to him? No. no. 
he plants the seed, he plants the taste of the drug or the substance, and then this person will go in search of him. Which means that once the seed is planted, you have received the seed. Now the seed will begin to bear fruit. So when you're receiving any seed, when you're receiving any uh, information, my dear brothers and sisters, be very mindful. Be very aware about what you are receiving. Be sure of what you are receiving and make sure that you reject it outright if it is not aligned with the word of God. Praise God. Praise Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, this is something which happened only a few days back and I just like to make a mention that we had some guests and uh, when we were in a conversation, uh, she, the one of the person who had come, she just made a mention like, uh, so your younger boy uh, goes to bed on his own. So I said, no, but the boys, are, they, they, they are together in the same room. And uh, so one side, my elder son is there. On the other side, I put some solid chairs so that he's kept secured, uh, you know, uh, on the border. And we put some pillows so that that forms like a barrier. So at that point in time, um, I uh, listened to what was said. You know, because he said, okay, otherwise he can fall, you know, from the bed if he's not having anyone to protect him, he can fall. So, so maybe it is a good idea to secure it with something. So I listened to it and I said, no, I put chairs. Okay, so this is something very simple. But, you know, it was so subtle that at that point in time, I did not take authority. I did not take authority to cancel the word that was spoken. And this boy has been sleeping on that bed for almost a year now. And you know, Sister Fedora, that very night, my younger son fell from the bed. And praise be to God, I always sprinkle the blood of Jesus over each member of our family before I go to bed. The pillow fell and he fell on the pillow. Praise God. Well, the pillow was put as a barrier for him. So the pillow fell and then he fell on the pillow. So, you know, it may seem very trivial. That person just said, he just said. You know, he can fall like, you know, you have to put certain barrier or barricade because he's small. I did not, I received those words and I only gave an explanation what I do, but I did not reject those words. I did not cancel those words. And it's not a coincidence. I don't believe it is a coincidence because if it did not happen for almost a year, then why should it have happened that very night? Power of words. So we need to understand and we need to be very mindful that the enemy gives lies. So logically, it seems right what the person would have said. But we need to be aware that it puts the spiritual realm into, for, into action. Because you've heard and you've contemplated on it. But you've not, I mean, I've heard, I've reflected on it. But I have not taken authority to cancel them so that those words don't bear harvest. Thank you, Jesus. So, Thank you, Jesus. So here we see that the enemy has, has uh, planted the seed. The women um, got to eat the fruit. That was disobedience. And the moment that was done, he fled from the scene. So his program, which was which was to be working in men, which was installed on that day. We know that for those who are perishing, to those to whom the gospel is still veiled, are still effectively working with that program running of disobedience. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Thank so, you, so, Jesus. 
So we we have to be aware that when we open the gates to receive things which are against the word of God, we need to know that you know uh, if we look at sister, can we go to Matthew twenty seven verses um, four? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood, but they said, "What is that to us? See to it yourself." Praise God. Praise so, God. see, after Judas betrayed um, Jesus, and Jesus was then condemned, he did repent. He repented, and then he went back to the chief priest. in a way probably he thought he could undo what he had done by returning the the silver uh, pieces that were given to him in exchange for betrayal but see what what is it that they are saying but they said what is it that what is that to us see to it yourself that is the language of the enemy he'll push you into things which are contradictory to god's plan for your life and once you have gotten there then he's got you and then he says what is that to me you see to it yourself and unless the gospel of christ is preached and, and you get the message that god is a loving god he has already forgiven you he has already received you through christ jesus when you understand that and you come to god in repentance up until that time you are left you are left in that situation driven to despair to be depressed and to go to extremes some even prompted to be suicidal ending one's life or probably get to addiction that they don't even want to know what is happening to them because as long as they are under the influence of the substance they think that they are good the moment the the substance is the effect is over they come to reality they cannot handle the reality so they take more so it becomes a vicious cycle so now there is no there is no uh, there's no will they don't even have the will the desire to come out because now it is difficult to handle but amidst this when people like you and me we who are saved we who have experienced the love of god when we choose to go out and reach out to people who are feeling helpless who are being driven to despair living in a depressed life feeling hopeless and helpless it is your job and my job to take the light of the gospel of christ to people like these who struggle so that the lies of the enemy are exposed because once you become a slave you are you are you remain a slave isn't it yes but praise be to god that we have a way out we have a way out by believing in the finished works of jesus if not for what jesus did for you and for me we were doomed but the love of god has allowed us a, a, he's given us a way out if you look at romans 6:16 six, thank you jesus thank you jesus do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves you are slaves of the one whom you obey either of sin which leads to death or of obedience which leads to righteousness praise god so when we when we becomes we become the slaves how are we becoming slaves to whoever we present ourselves as obedient slaves so now what Uh, adam and eve they were in obedience to god's word but when the lie was served and and uh, eve was deceived 
the obedience turn from God to the devil. So now whose who's slave did they become? Slave of sin. And what did that do? It led to death. But the good news is that just because man became a slave to sin through disobedience, it did not end there. The love of God came searching for us. Love himself came down in search of us. And he, through his obedience, has earned us righteousness. And that is what 1 Peter 2.24 tells us. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when we look at 1 Peter 2.24, oftentimes we may just look at the latter part of the scripture which says, by his wounds you have been healed. It's good to know that. But much more important is what comes before that. He bore our sins in his body on the cross. Why? So that free from sins we might live for righteousness. And this is the righteousness of Christ that is given to us. Now we have a right standing with God because we are in Christ Jesus. And now having been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, by his wounds, you have been healed. So when you, when you take the scripture, no matter what kind of a report is served to you, it doesn't matter what stage, what type, what sickness, what, what intensity, it doesn't matter. It's just a fact. When you believe in the written word of God, when you believe that because you have made God your refuge and your fortress, your God in whom you, you, you trust, that he's promised to satisfy you with long life, that long life is not meant to be one of sickness. You may fall sick. I'm not denying that sickness will never come. Sickness can come. And many a times it is a consequence of Oftentimes, it can be a consequence of our uh, choices, maybe wrong habits, wrong eating habits, the environment that we live. Many things can be attributed to it. Sickness can come. But what is more important is that the knowledge that you need not continue to remain sick because you have been given the power to receive your healing by what Jesus has accomplished on the cross. For he has finished it all. And, and when he died on the cross, he said before he could give up his spirit in John 19, 30, Jesus said, it is finished. The entire mission is finished. Sin, sickness, everything is nailed on the cross. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, thank you, Jesus. Sister, we, can we go back to... Genesis 3. Please, God. They um, heard this. Oh, yes, sister. Go ahead, sis. Um, nine, eight, sorry, eight. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. So, so, even though men disobeyed, God did not leave men. God was aware of what happened, and that is why he came in search of men. But knowing what they had done was wrong. They were not able to face God. And that's why they went and they hid themselves. 
God is coming in search of each one of us. All have sinned and fallen short of his glory. So none can boast that they are righteous by their own doing. None can boast that we are perfect. It's only God who is perfect. It's only the Father in heaven who is perfect. We have all fallen short. But even though we fall short, he comes in search of us. It's not that we go in search of him. He comes in search of us. I just like to um, make a mention that uh, we had this uh, 89-year-old man in my village um, and he lost his wife. He didn't have children. His siblings died. So he was one of the only person in his family who was surviving. And over a period of time, being 89, he was not able to look after himself and he was requesting he was requesting his neighbors to take him and put him in some home. And when uh, that request was there, uh, they tried, the, the association tried, but it was very expensive to put him in a home because they had to give money. And he was not able to afford because he didn't have any resources with him. So when they tried at some uh, free uh, home, uh, they had not accepted it. But in that, someone just happened to mention to me and asked me if, if I knew someone. And, uh, you know, uh, the Lord led me to a place wherein he did uh, get a place to go and live. And uh, when, when this person had to be admitted, they needed certain documents like, you know, the parish priest letter, the panchayat, the police clearance. A lot of things were required. And, you know, sister within a matter of four hours from the time the, the destitute home uh, approved of his admission, the church letter, the panchayat letter, the police clearance was all done in four hours time on a single day. And that too on the eve of, you know, we have we've had the prime minister visiting our state. And so, you know, as expected, all the police force was on duty. I mean, it is given that when the country's prime minister is visiting, there has to be security arrangements. It's so many delegates also coming along with him. So they were not in office. And yet, and yet, God made it possible that when we visited the, the police station, within 10 minutes, his no objection certificate was issued. Yes. Now, why? Is it is it that, that that men went around taking approvals? No. But why, why did he get all of that? Because God loves him. He is the beloved of the Lord. He has heard his cries. He would have prayed to God to take care of him in his loneliness. So if I have gone there, I have not done a great thing. But I have only allowed myself to be used by the Lord to serve this man. So what is God expecting of us? He wants to serve us. But when he serves me, he will use someone else to serve me. When he has to serve someone else, he will want my cooperation to serve them. Like, for example, when, when I did not know the truth in a manner which, which I understand today, it was one of uh, my elder son's classmates, mother, who was uh, at JCILM, who introduced me. And the first thing she mentioned to me was, you know, Samitra, uh, her name is Elaine. She said, you know, this cancer is just a lie. You know, the truth is that you are healed. This were her first few words that she told me. So, which means that the deception that was served to me, the, the lie that was served to me, that I was given to believe that now I have a cancer diagnosis, don't know when, when I will die or how long I will live. When I came to know the truth, then I was able to receive my inheritance. So God used her to bless me. So she became a servant of the Lord so that I could be blessed by God. Now it is my turn to be available as a servant of the Lord, to be a blessing to someone else. And likewise, so it goes as a chain reaction. We can't be saying that, okay, I got my blessing, now done, I'm sorted. That would be very selfish. 
we are here because god has loved us the the word of what what we understand is that god has created men so that we know him we love him and we serve him knowing him is through his written word loving him is when we when we obey his word and serving him is when we allow him to serve his people because jesus said even if you give a glass of water to someone in my name the, the whatever you do to the least of my brothers it is done unto me so whatever we do it is unto the lord so when something is done unto me say when sister elaine did that kind deed of introducing me into the word it is done unto the lord but it is done to me through her so likewise god would have done so many good things in each one of your lives it may not always be in the area of sickness it could be in some other areas maybe finances relationships uh, you know overcoming addiction so many different things the, the lord would have delivered you from so many things but when he has done that for you now should you not moved with compassion to be able to to be willing to go out and do likewise you know jesus said at the at the last supper uh, when he went about uh, washing the feet of his disciples and he said that me being a master um, i have washed your feet you do likewise so at the heart of everything is service god is love no doubt about it but god who is love who came down in flesh he was here preaching the message of repentance and he was here serving his people he himself served and his service was by virtue of bringing about deliverance healing giving the message of the gospel and he practically showed service to his own apostles by washing their feet thank you sister fedora thank you jesus for i so have said may yeah, i go ahead sorry sister please go for i have set you an example that you also should do as i have done to you please god please god thank you jesus so primarily if if we see uh, from what we have learned today that the enemy the enemy is on a on a prowl he is waiting to see whom he can devour he will deceive you and if you do not know the truth you may end up accepting the lie as a truth and these things will come to you when you are most vulnerable you could be very vulnerable at a time that you may be hungry you may be vulnerable at a time that you are actually very angry you may be vulnerable when you are in pain in sickness so there could be various situations that you are vulnerable the enemy will capitalize at the time you are most vulnerable see when isau came after after hunting he was famished he was hungry what did he do he 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 sold his birthright just out of hunger for a bowl of lentil soup he traded his birthright so the enemy will capitalize at a time when we are most vulnerable some of the times we are most vulnerable are the people when when you are in pain when you are in sickness so the enemy brings about his deception because there you would have already been weakened you your energy is gone and then whatever is given is given whatever is said is said now no time to learn things to go and fight so surely it is it is good for us that we equip ourselves with the word of god beforehand thank you jesus thank you so jesus. just just as faith comes by hearing and hearing by the by the word of god so does fear if you are listening to fearful situations and circumstances and you are being part of all of these things 
over and over again if if a person is sitting with his report of critical illness and only looking at the report over and over again what's going to come fear so we have to keep it away so report one cert has to be cancelled and then you have to stand in god's promise by speaking the scripture promises that speak about your inheritance that speak about your healing through christ jesus praise god praise thank god. you jesus so you, so jesus. let us be aware that the his his most uh, his his most or rather his best tool which is deception it has been the same but it is only sad that you know even though it has been the same strategy from the beginning yet people are being deceived we get deceived so let us be aware about the strategies of the enemy let us know that we are not fighting flesh and blood but we are fighting the wiles of the enemy let us know that he is a defeated foe we are the one who are conquerors in christ so we are already victorious let us let us get ourselves into a position of victory and and tap into our inheritance because now we don't fight for victory but we 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 take a position we take a position that we move from victory to victory so it's like uh, before i wind up i just have one example sister fedora Uh, yes, I remember sister. you sharing your testimony uh, that uh, you got your job offer uh, whilst you were still doing your graduation first year yeah at the end of first year of first year of gradu- graduation so that means till you finish your masters you had another 3 years or 4 years uh 3 years 3 years more because one year is done yeah yeah 3 years more so from now beforehand you know you have a job which is already available for you but does it mean that you don't have to qualify yourself no you have to study isn't it yes. but even though you have to study you already know what is the price the price is a job in this really good company yeah and now that is becoming a motivation for you even further to do well to equip yourself even better and better in excel isn't it yes. now you and i already know what is given to us salvation is already given to us in christ jesus now should we not strive to live a life according to his word living according to his will for us to be in obedience should that not be a um, inspiration and the drive for all that we do because we are not going to earn anything different he has already earned it for us now all that we need to do is he having on eternal life for us we allow ourselves to live our lives according to his will and be able to experience god's love and allow others to experience it through us praise god praise god thank you jesus thank you jesus sister um i think um i'm done for today uh, would you like to add something sister please god one time before you can get to your knee thank praise you jesus spirit. praise jesus um thank you holy spirit the lord was revi- bringing to my mind the parable of the prodigal son and um where the son is has left home and he comes to a point where now he has he has no money to do anything and um, so one of the citizens send him to the fields to feed the pigs uh why this parable is because why do many of us even after knowing the strategy of satan even after knowing that he is the father of lies still continue to be in that is because of this verse 16 he would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything he is the prodigal son 
he left home he has reached a point where now he has nothing and he is eating the pods the food that the pigs eat he is not only eating it but he is gladly eating it we is pig this um this food of the pigs life satan and he is gladly having it in his house would he have had the pigs of the food no he never has eaten the pigs of the food but now because the lies of satan have caused such a destruction in his life that he has no other option he continues to eat it more and more and every day when he gets up he eats that but you know what changed he always had the option to go back home but in verse 17 it was only when he came back to himself he said how many of my father's hired hands have bread not the pots that the pigs were eating and this is talking about the servants he's talking about his the father's hired hands the servants in his father's house have bread enough and to spare but here i'm dying of hunger i will get up and go to my father and i will say to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you i am no longer worthy to be called your son treat me like one of your hired hands the way you can break out from that lies and deceptions is by knowing your father knowing that he wants you back home and the son got up and he went what would that mean for us that would mean rebuke that lies of satan rebuke those seeds uprooted it from its root in your life in the name of jesus for now you have come back to your senses and then get up and go where to the father's house where is that to the word of god for your father came looking for you in genesis god came searching for you and me even though we sinned and we saw that so now after we heard this session we might think oh satan comes with lies and deceptions and we don't know the whole bible so we are definitely going to fall trap god is faithful okay god is faithful and he loves you you don't have to worry about satan's lies you only have to keep alert but before that make sure to soak yourself in the word of god fill yourself with the word of god meditate on his word day and night that you may know that you have a father because we will fall but when you know the word of god when you know you have a father to go back to you will not be sitting and eating the pig's food and crying and saying i'm dying of hunger you will have bread enough to eat and pigs big fattened calf cut for you and you will be celebrated back home praise god thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you yeah yeah that's that's another parable which clearly shows us the love of the father and uh, nothing absolutely nothing should stop us from going back to the father no matter what is shown to us by the enemy because ultimately we are his children in christ jesus so we are adopted into the family of the faithful and now we have no fear praise god thank praise you jesus praise god thank, thank you jesus. jesus thank you lord so we'll pray in thanks and close the session sister i'd like to say the thanksgiving prayer yes sister 
Asari kero manahi fromasha sali kretuna avial miwashi fiskat yani hari la hamatani ikri de kres niana ni muro krasa shitsini mokorupa la hisi kero shitsani prepara helayatini afirmitini rakaliatini se hafia shas manahi la rapari fromashantini Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this wonderful time that we had to study your word. Having heard your word today, now going about our day, we choose to meditate on your word, O oh Lord, and what you have taught us. Thank you for teaching us that you came looking for us even though man sinned. Thank you for showing us that you won the victory for us and it is finished and Satan's lies and deceptions have no power over us if we don't give in to it. Lord, areas in our life where we have listened to the lies of Satan, where we have been deceived because of our own lack of knowledge, we come to repentance, O Lord, and we make a decision to know what you have said, not what these lies have spoken to us. For when you came looking for Adam and Eve, you asked Adam and Eve, Adam, who told you? Lord, many things people have told us that are not in alignment to your word of God. Many things we have listened because we didn't know your word. But Lord, thank you for being faithful to us giving us a teaching so that we know what you have told us. You have called us anointed. You have called us blessed. You have not forsaken us. You have not left us. You love us. Thank you. Thank you for being our father. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for revealing the mysteries of this hidden truths unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus.